Good morning and welcome to Bible study with Pastor Lola. I would like us to uh, move on with our studies uh, from the book of Romans. Today we'll be studying Romans chapter 15. The last uh, study we had was from uh, Romans chapter 14. So we'll quickly do a recap of Romans chapter 14 before we move on to chapter 15 today. I'm sure you will agree with me if you have been following this um, um, this particular book of Romans, the teachings and all that, that is being um, a very rewarding book, um, a rewarding knowledge, and that we know that um, every Christian, okay, everyone, every believer, everyone who has just come to, to the Lord, even if you have been in the Lord for for decades, this is a book that we must always go over we must always um, study because it helps our growth and it helps us to understand a lot of things about Christianity and how we should live for the Lord. We should live as Christians and um, how to please people, how to how to um, live like Christ. So today we are going to uh, be looking at chapter 15. But before we move on, like I said, we'll do a recap of the previous chapter. Let's quickly take, um, uh, let's say a word of prayer before we continue so that we can have understanding. Because I always believe that, you know, a lot of people study also, but they do not have understanding. Maybe because they do not ask the Holy Spirit to give them the understanding of what they are studying. So this morning we're going to be asking that the Spirit of God, who is our teacher, will grant us understanding of his word this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the knowledge that we have gained so far how far you have helped us opening our eyes every time we come to you and teaching us new things today we are here again heavenly father we ask that you will open our eyes again send your word O lord and back your word up with your life and your spirit in the name of jesus grant us O lord deep insight in your word uh, that we may understand uh, even beyond our own imaginations in the name of Jesus. Thank you for opening our eyes and for removing every skill that the, that the devil has put in our eyes for us not to understand that. Give us, O oh Lord, quick understanding in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So quickly, I just want to do a summary or a recap of chapter 14. In chapter 14, we learned um, that we must stop criticizing one another, stop criticizing believers, over trivia, trivia issues. We're not talking about uh, uh, those who are living in sin and who call themselves Christians anyway. We should stop criticizing ourselves over trivia issues. Okay? Um, we should allow the, we should, we should allow love okay, to keep binding us together. So we must work in the law of love. Let the law, the law of love as Christ, as Christ okay, um, taught us let the law of love keep binding us together. Let it be what we are holding on to. Okay, we must also um, know that each one of us will give account of our lives to God. Okay, if someone is living, someone says he's a Christian and is living unworthily, okay, uh, instead of criticizing, if you have opportunity to come to know the person, you can actually help. Okay, to give the person understanding instead of criticizing. And if that person does not want to listen, okay, and he or she is, says is a Christian and um, you know that they are in the church, leave them for the Lord to correct and to deal with. Because each one of us, we are going to give account of how we have lived, give account of our lives to God. Nobody is going to give account to you because you that you are criticizing, you are not their God, and you are not the one that died for them, okay? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Also, ensure that you do not put a stumbling block on the way of any Christian. Put a stumbling block on the way of any believer because God is going to also judge you. One thing I always tell people is that a lot of us tend to do, tend to want to uh, be the Holy Spirit in the lives of others. So we want to do the work of the Holy Spirit. We are not, we are not allowing uh, people to grow, okay, through the Holy Spirit. Because he's our teacher. He's the one that 
that teaches us is the one that guides us. Allow the Holy Spirit to also teach them the same way He has taught you. Praise the Lord. You can only um, advise, you can only teach, okay, the word. But let the Holy Spirit be the one to give them understanding and also help them because people will make mistakes as they are coming to the Lord. No one comes to the Lord and just changes immediately and becomes perfect in one day. No, there are going to be uh, battles of, okay, uh, being um, still wanting um, to be live, the, live in the past and the present. It's not usually easy to come out of the past like that. But a, as a gradual, a gradual process, as we are teaching as leaders, uh, we are teaching and we are asking the Holy Spirit to guide them, the Holy Spirit to open their eyes, the Holy Spirit to give them understanding. Because the Holy Spirit speaks to each and every one of us. Uh, he also will speak to them. He will let them know when, when they are doing wrong things. Uh, that as believers, as Christians, they are not meant to do that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So let's ensure that we do not put a stumbling block uh, on the part of any Christian. Because some, um, from criticism, they have also gone back. They have left the church. They have gone back to the world. Because people keep criticizing and will not allow them to grow okay grow on their own pace at, at their own pace with the holy spirit we all have our pace of growth so let them grow at, the, at their own pace with the holy spirit he knows how to deal with each one of us all we can do is to keep teaching keep teaching keep teaching keep teaching and no matter how hard um hard said anyone is if truly he or she is ready to um to live in Christ, is ready to follow Christ, you will see that they also will begin to change gradually. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Also, um, the way each one understands certain things differ. Okay? And so many people do not have um, the ability to understand fast and enough. Some are fast and quick in understanding. So, the pace, each one's pace uh, usually differ. The way and the way we understand also um, differ. As long as we are walking in love, nothing in itself is unclean. That's the that scripture. Nothing in itself is unclean. As long as we are walking in love, and that's why I I cite to this particular um, chapter, the law of love. Okay, as Christians, when we begin to operate in the love of God. We begin to walk in the love of Christ. Uh, they would discover that there are certain things that we cannot do because of the love of Christ in us, uh, so that we do we do not make others to fall. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So um, here we, we are told that nothing on its own is unclean as long as we are walking in love. Praise the Lord. Uh, what someone sees as unclean may not be unclean to another. Okay, except it's hurting another person and is destroying the person and if you are working in love and whatever you are eating whatever you are doing if you see that it's destroying another person and it's hurting them of course because of the love of christ in you you are going to stop doing such things you are going to stop eating such things and praise the lord if it's going to destroy someone else if it's going to destroy you also and it's going to destroy others the law of love we ensure that you stop eating whatever it is or doing whatever it is, or dressing the way it is, or the way it is that you feel is hurting another person, or destroying another person. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, we must not also allow what we eat, like, like I said earlier, to destroy others. So that our good deed will not be slandered. Our good deed and, and the name of Christ will not be slandered in our, okay, through us. For the kingdom of God is not for eating and drinking, it's not for um, self-satisfaction, okay? Okay, the eating and drinking there means self-satisfaction. It's not for pleasing yourself. That's not what the kingdom of God is for, okay? It's for righteousness. It's for um, um, advancing the kingdom of God and for pleasing others to make sure that they are able also to grow in Christ. Praise the Lord. It's for righteousness. It's for peace. It's for joy in the Holy Spirit. Amen. And anyone who walks with Christ in this way, remembering that the kingdom of God is for righteousness, is for peace, is for joy, 
and this joy is not for only you this peace is not for only you okay and um, you must know that you must make sure that others also partake in this joy in this peace and in this righteousness then such a person will be pleasing the holy spirit such a person will be walking with christ such a person will be approved now by god and also by men amen therefore let's pursue whatever promotes peace let's pursue whatever whatever builds up others okay whatever builds up others is what we should be well, pursuing as christians praise the lord hallelujah and everything the bible says everything is very simple actually but not everything is necessary certain things may be permissible okay they may actually not be a sin i say but if it is not necessary okay and if if it's going to cause destruction it's going to destroy other people then we can do without them praise the lord hallelujah god's work must not be destroyed because of our own self-interest self-satisfaction god's work must not be destroyed so keep your belief to yourself the bible says we should keep our belief to ourselves if it's not going to benefit others keep your belief to yourself do not condemn yourself also by what you have approved because once you have you have a doubt in your mind about whatever it is that you have approved then you must stop doing it if not you will be condemned you stand to be condemned okay you stand to be condemned if you do not continue to believe if you have doubts stop whatever you are doing if you do not continue in faith if you do not continue to do what you are doing in faith in that scripture that's verse 23 of um, romans chapter 14 that everything that we do without faith is a sin everything that we do without faith everything that we do in doubt is a sin so it's better we do not um, do them once we are not convinced once we are not sure once we have a doubt in our minds uh, praise the lord uh, so this is a uh, um, recap for chapter 14 and now we move on to uh, chapter 15 and now we uh, first want us to read okay before we um, talk about them let's look at um, Romans chapter 15 now we who are strong have an obligation to bear the weaknesses of those without strength so we all know that we are not all the same you know some are weak while some are strong in faith but we are praying that everyone we grow up okay everyone's faith will keep growing but there are some that are weak why some are stronger so we must bear with those who are still weak uh, you know, probably those who are just coming to um, coming in coming to know christ of course their faith may still be weak while those of us who have been in christ for years uh, okay we, we already have this confidence we have we have this boldness and uh, we we have we have been tested and we have also tested uh, god and god has proved himself to us praise the lord hallelujah so we have the obligation of uh, to bear with those who are still weak uh, and um, we are not to please ourselves okay we are not to please ourselves so we are, i am um, if i think this is so common in the church today for people to you know just keep condemning people especially people who are just coming to the lord i keep telling people someone cannot just give his life um today or this month and by by within a month you believe that you you think that that person is strong enough and all that no we, that's why we keep encouraging ourselves that's why we keep teaching okay that's why teaching is very necessary um and among believers teaching we keep teaching and we who are also teaching must live that life for them to also see we must also keep testifying okay um about our lives keep talking about our lives so that others who are just coming we know that it is possible to actually live for christ without sin praise the lord hallelujah so each of us must also please his neighbor for his own good in order to build him up okay why are we pleasing others especially pleasing those who are just coming in who have not who are still babies in christ uh, we try to do things to please them in order to build them up not condemning them to chase them away okay so many of us 
um, true criticizing, uh, true criticism and uh, condemnation. We have chased a lot, chased a lot of people out, okay, out of the church. And uh, so many of them have gone back to their old lives. Uh, I don't think God is going to be happy with us if we are chasing people out of his kingdom instead of us encouraging them to stay, okay, and just bearing with their weaknesses and keep teaching them and keep encouraging them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For even Christ did not please himself. On the contrary, as it is written, the insult of those whom insult you are falling on me. For whatever was written before was written for our instruction, so that through our endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures, we may have hope. Praise the Lord. So, uh, young Christians, young believers must we must be able to see endurance in us. They must be able to see that we we are um, walking in love and we are able to bear, okay, um, certain things so that they too can um, get stronger. Like the scripture says, even Christ did not please himself, but on the contrary, it is written, the insult of those who insult you are falling on me. That is, he is taking insult for others. He is taking, he is helping, um, um, he helped us uh, to take our uh, things that would have come to us, uh, he took for us. We can also do that uh, for those who are just coming in, okay, by encouraging them, by um, um, sharing from their pro uh, sharing with, with their sharing from their problems and carrying certain burdens, uh, okay, with them so that we can encourage them. Praise the Lord, hallelujah! And through our uh, uh, our endurance, uh, our encouragement, uh, and uh, teaching and um, teaching them the scriptures and opening their eyes uh, to the word of God, then their hope will be built up, and they, their hope um, they will have hope, and they will be able to also endure certain things. Praise the Lord! Now may the God of endurance and encouragement grant you agreement with one another according to christ jesus so that you may glorify the god and father of our lord jesus christ with a united mind and voice so christians the body of christ must have um the same mind we all we must have the mind of christ that's a united mind if we are divided then it shows that we're actually not operating the mind of christ we must have the same mind we must have the same voice because we are all body of christ we are all the same body. We belong to the same body. So we must have the same voice and the same mind. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Therefore, accept one another just as Christ has accepted you to the glory of God. Now I say that Christ has become a servant of the circumcision on behalf of the truth of God to confirm the promises of the to the fathers and so that the Gentiles may glorify God for his mercy, as it is written. Therefore, I will praise you among the Gentiles, and I will sing psalms to your name. Again, it says, Rejoice, you Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, all the people should praise him. And again, Isaiah says, The root of Jesse, of Jesse will appear. The one who rises to rule the Gentiles, in him the Gentiles will hope. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So all these scriptures are written, okay, in order to glorify the name of Christ and in order for the Gentiles, like I always say, the Gentiles were people who, didn't, um, who were God's enemies, who were idol worshippers, but now they have come to Christ. And um, for them to be seen through the scriptures, because apart from reading the scripture, they are also seeing those of us who have come to Christ before them, and they are seeing the unity, they are seeing um, the love of Christ in our lives, and they, are, they um, are seeing the display of that servanthood. And the same way Jesus Christ became a servant, okay, for us, a servant of circumcision, a servant on our behalf, so that we um, could come to him. So they should see uh, those who are just coming, or those who are not even uh, uh, have not come to Christ at all, should see this unity amongst us, and they should see the way we 
are taking insults for one another, the, the way we are supporting each other, the way we are praising God, even in our circumstances, in, in uncomfortable circumstances, or the, um, through our challenges, through our problems, just rejoicing in the Lord, and uh, the Gentiles also coming to the Lord, uh, and also meeting meeting um, those who have been in the Lord and also rejoicing and rejoicing and rejoicing. Praise the Lord. Uh, hallelujah. So the word of God must be practiced. That's what um, the scripture is saying. Must be practiced. Not just declared, but we must not just uh, com uh, confession now, but we must profess it. We must be doing it. Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, we are not just speaking about it. We are doing it. Uh, so that others can see that we are doing it and they can see our lives. Uh, okay? Um, that is actually speaking the word that we the, our the life that we are living is speaking what we are saying is displaying what we are saying praise the lord hallelujah now may the god of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the holy spirit amen so um may the god of hope christ is our hope and as we continue to hope in him as we continue to believe in him we are always filled with joy with peace of mind, okay? As long as we continue to follow, as long as we continue to believe in him, praise the Lord. I want you to know that not everyone that is in the church, not everyone that is called a Christian today is still following Christ, is still hoping in him. So many people have gone outside looking for hope somewhere else and if such people, if people do not hope in him, if we stop hoping him, in him, we stop trusting him, we stop believing in him, then there's every tendency, of course, uh, those who have stopped believing in him, they will lack peace. They will lack joy. So when we see believers who lack peace, who lack joy, who, who, who always have sleepless nights, uh, then it is because they have shifted their hope from Christ. Who is there? Who is supposed to be our hope? Christ, who is our hope? Once you have shifted your hope from Christ, who is our hope? Then you will lose hope. You will lose your sleep. You will lose your peace. You will lose joy. Praise the Lord. Because you will begin to walk in unrighteousness. The moment that you have lost, you have lost your hope um, in Christ and you have shifted your focus from him, of course, you have, put, you have entered into sin. That's it. You have entered into sin and you have lost joy you have lost peace you have lost your righteousness praise the lord hallelujah amen because at that time also you have lost the holy spirit okay the we say it, uh, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the holy spirit so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the holy spirit so it is the power of the holy spirit uh, that gives us the overflow of hope so once we have lost um, our hope in Christ, because Christ is our hope, once we have lost our trust in him, we have lost our belief in him, we have lost our faith in him, then definitely we have lost hope. And we can no longer connect with the Holy Spirit, who is the one that gives us overflow of hope. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, my brothers, I myself... I'm convinced about you that you you also are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, and able to instruct one another. Nevertheless, to remind you, I have written to you more boldly on some points because of the grace given to me by God. To be a minister of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles, serving as a priest of God's good news. My purpose is that the offering of the Gentiles may be acceptable, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, I have reason to boast in Christ Jesus regarding what pertains to God. For I will not dare say anything except what Christ has accomplished through me, to make the Gentiles obedient, obedient by word and deed, by the power of miraculous signs and wonders, and by the power of God's Spirit, as a result, I have fully proclaimed the good news about the about Christ uh, from Jerusalem to, to all the way around Illyricum. Il 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 so my aim is to evangelize where Christ has not been 
made in order that I will not be building on someone else's foundation. But, but as it is written, those who had no who had no report of him, they will see. And those who have who have not heard about him will understand. Praise the Lord. What that scripture um, is telling us is um okay, is that um I, I will I will take it again. Say, now my brothers, I myself am convinced that about you that you also are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge and able to instruct one another okay once we are filled with knowledge of god we are filled with we have hope okay remember um the holy spirit um is the one that overflows us with uh, um with hope once we have the overflow of hope in christ by the power of the holy spirit then hope releases knowledge unto us okay hope um releases knowledge we are filled with goodness hope gives us uh, fills us with goodness and fills us with all knowledge uh, then we are able to instruct ourselves uh, instruct one another because of the knowledge um, of god uh, that we we have received praise the lord uh, hallelujah and also okay let me quickly look at um because of the okay because of the knowledge of, of uh, god that we have we also have hope and that we can instruct ourselves praise the lord here apostle paul also said that that um, he would rather evangelize those who have never heard about christ rather than um going after those that have already been won for christ i don't know whether some of us are understanding that now because some of us have seen people um um, going to evangelize people that are inside the church, which is wrong. There are millions of people outside who have never heard about Christ, who have not even come to Christ. I, even right now, I see, you know, talk to some people who, who say, oh, I have never heard about Christ before. These are the people we should be looking for, not those that are already in the church, who have already heard about Christ. Maybe they have accepted Christ, yes. Or maybe they are um, yes maybe they have accepted it is not those people that we should go and start evangelizing again there's a lot of work to be done all those ones should be it should be doing now because if they are in the church is to be listening to they should be taught okay not preaching to them again but taught how to grow how to draw closer how to know god okay uh how to grow in the spirit how to grow in their faith they are, we, are, we are not just preaching to them but we are teaching them how to grow we are we are building them up but those that have not heard about christ they are the ones that we are evangelizing so we're talking so when we talk about evangelism you don't evangelize someone who has already come to christ you don't evangelize someone who has heard about christ so most of our efforts of evangel evangelism our efforts in evangelizing shouldn't be wasted on those that have been evangelized it should be on those that have not heard about christ those who have not come to christ they are the ones that we go preaching to why the ones who have been evangelized those who have heard about christ those who have accepted christ all they need now is teaching teaching so that they can be built up so that they can grow we are not just preaching to them again we are teaching them to grow we are teaching them to yes to grow in the spirit to grow in the knowledge of god because they need to keep growing in order to also become like christ because we cannot become like christ in one day praise the lord hallelujah amen all right i'll continue so he said, those who had no report of him will see, those, that is, those who have never heard about him, about Christ, they will see when we are evangelizing. They will hear, they will understand. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's why I have been prevent, prevented many times from coming to you. Okay, he was saying he wanted to go to the Christians, okay, in a room now, but he had been prevented from going because those ones have heard about christ those ones were in christ before so he needed to go to those who had not heard about christ so that's why i have been pre prevented 
uh, many times from coming to you. But now I no longer have any work to do in these other provinces, and I have strongly desired for many years to come to you whenever I travel to Spain. For I do hope to see you when I pass through and to be sent on my way there by you once I have first enjoyed your company for a while. Now, however, I'm traveling to Jerusalem to serve the saints, okay? To serve the saints. To serve the saints. Now we serve the saints. The saints are the ones that are in the church. The saints are the ones that have come to Christ, that have accepted Christ. Everyone that has accepted Christ is a saint. So we as leaders serve the saints, okay? For Macedonia and Achaia, and Achaia were pleased to make a contribution to the poor among the saints in Jerusalem. So there are, there are uh, the saints, okay? We are the saints, and those who have come to Christ, they are saints. So among the saints, there are those who are poor, financially handicapped, and all that. So we can minister to them in the church. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, they were pleased and they were indebted to them. For if the Gentiles have shared in their spiritual benefits, then they are obligated to minister to the Jews in material needs. So when I have finished this and safely delivered the funds to them, I will go by way of you to Spain. But I know that when I come to you, I will come in the fullness of the blessings of Christ. So in that um, a particular statement, we were also made to know. We we're made to know that um, those who have uh, ministered spiritual um, um, spiritual needs to us, that those that we have enjoyed spiritual benefit from, we also must we must also minister to them materially. Okay, they must enjoy material uh, needs from us. This is one thing that um, is think I think is most likely maybe uh, fast fading away because so many people condemn that uh, uh, why are pastors doing this why are they collecting this why are they those that have enjoyed spiritual benefits okay from ministers you should minister back onto them materially because these people have labored to help you to grow they have labored and they have you have enjoyed spiritual needs uh, spiritual benefit from them you are growing through their teachings, uh, through their uh, prayers, uh, through their labor, okay, over you. So when you have material, um, uh, material things, or they have material needs, you can also minister back onto them materially. Praise the Lord. That's how it is supposed to be. We are obligated to um, minister material things back to those who to those that we have enjoyed spiritual benefits from. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So when, uh, okay. Now I implore you, brothers, through the Lord Jesus Christ and through the love of the Spirit. So agonize together with me in your prayers, in your prayers to God on my behalf, that I may be rescued from the unbelievers in Judea. That I may be rescued from the unbelievers in Judea, and that my service for Jerusalem may be acceptable to the saints, and that by God's will I may come to you with joy and be refreshed and be refreshed together with you. May the God of peace be with you all in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So that's um chapter 15. But I'll quickly uh, want to just explain. Or talk about most of the things that we have just read now okay um, the scripture in that scripture the bible tells us that uh, we must think about others and think about placing them above ourselves i'm sure you, you read that also um in that verse one so now we who are strong have an obligation to bear the weaknesses of those without strength and not to please ourselves so whatever we are doing, it is not pleasing ourselves now. And that if we are not pleasing ourselves, so it's easy for us to be able to carry everyone along. It's easy for us to be able to help others to grow. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So thinking about others and placing them above ourselves is a display of our Christ-like attitude. Remember, as we are growing, for those who have grown in the Lord, 
for those who, that we can call elders now, for those who are, we, that, that, that are ministers. Uh, we, it is assumed that we have grown, okay, more than those who are just coming in. So we must not be thinking about ourselves alone. We must, and we must not be thinking about pleasing ourselves uh, alone. We, find, we must think about other believers, especially those who are just coming up, those who are, who are just coming in, think more about them and please them above ourselves. Please them above ourselves. This is a display of our Christ-like attitude so that they can see that attitude in us uh, and they also will grow into that attitude because they will become elders. They also can also they can also treat others who are just coming in the same way because that's what they have seen in their leaders that's what they have seen okay as it as they are grow, as they are growing that's what they are seeing um that their leaders are doing so as they are seeing it they also will grow into it and you know it continues like that they'll be able to pass on all this um uh, uh benefits all the spiritual attitude to others it's a display of christ like of our christ-like attitude if jesus could do that okay as a human being then we can we can also do do same i'm sure we saw or we all read even though we did not see but we read how jesus um took everybody how uh, he raised the disciples how he raised uh, his followers and those who came to him you know we we we, we have the knowledge of that because we have read them and as we are reading we are studying you know this the, this attitude you know and all these things that we are reading about christ become our own attitude also praise the lord hallelujah in as much as we also saw the um the apostles of old living that same way we can also live that same way as as as, as a believer who is an elder you can go hungry for a young believer okay we're not thinking about ourselves alone and not pleasing ourselves alone you do things because of the young believers so that they can grow to also become strong and be able to stand praise the lord hallelujah so our encouragement our encouragement and endurance come through the study and meditation of the scriptures Okay, so let's use the scriptures to encourage ourselves as we are studying. And that's why studying the scriptures um, is very important to believers. Either you're just coming in as a, as a uh, young believer or you're an old believer, you're an elder, you've been in the church. Studying helps us to stay focused. Studying helps us to keep living like Christ. Praise the Lord. Also, we are expected to accept everyone. I'm just doing a summary of what we have just read now in chapter 15. We are expected to accept everyone who comes to Christ, just as Christ has accepted us and died for us all. So you did not die for them. They came to Christ, accept them, because Jesus has accepted them. We also came to, to him same way. And he accepted us. So why are we chasing people away? Why are we looking at people before we accept that they are Christians? You know, you, you want to scrutinize them. You x-ray them before you accept that they are Christians. You, I mean, that's not your work as a leader. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. That's God's work. Let them come. Just keep teaching. Our work is to keep teaching and encourage and allow the Holy Spirit to do the work of rebuking them praise the lord hallelujah amen all right just as christ has accepted us and died for us all without any discrimination for we are all one in him we are all one in christ each of us we are one in christ the same way he has accepted you he has accepted me he's still accepting others either they are greek they are jew they are Gentiles, they are this, they are that. There's no discrimination in the body of Christ. Christ does not discriminate. There's no white and there's no black. We are all the same. So he doesn't discriminate. And so we must accept everyone the same way he has accepted everyone. And he has also accepted us. Of course, we were not perfect when we came to him. But he accepted us with all our flaws 
and he died for our sins. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For Christ is our hope. And through this hope, it fills us with joy and peace as we keep believing in him. You know, we have read that in the scripture. It's our hope. So it keeps filling us up with joy. It keeps filling us up with peace as we keep believing in him. And that's why this, that scripture says we, we have the overflow of hope through the Holy Spirit. And that's what we should be looking forward to. Overflow of hope, which means your hope you know, keeps getting stronger. You are not doubting. You are not um, you, you believe in for everything. You know that. <laughs> and so, so when you have that hope, hope does not fail you. When you put your hope in him, the hope will not fail you. So we keep hoping that things will get better, that you will get better, that whatever is happening, or the challenges, the whatever it is, the suffering, you know, everything will soon be over. That is our hope. Because he will intervene. He is intervening. He is there for us. He's backing us up. He's fighting our battles. He's shielding us. He's meeting us at the point of our needs. He's providing for us. He's opening new doors of favor. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So it is also in this hope that we are filled with goodness and all knowledge which enables us to instruct one another. If you, don't have, if you do not have hope, there will be no goodness and you will not have knowledge to be able to instruct one another. Or to instruct others those who do not have hope they are the ones who lack knowledge they are the ones who are not filled with goodness and they are the ones who are in the church criticizing everybody because they do not have hope if you have hope you know that god can change anyone's life god can turn anything around and no matter who that person is god can still use the person praise the lord all we need is to have hope as we are encouraging, as we are teaching. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. It is not for us to chase people out of God's kingdom. We do not have that authority. We do not have that power to chase people that Christ died for, people that have come to Christ. All we need is just to keep teaching them, keep encouraging them, knowing that, and keep asking God to reach out to them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We also must share, like I said, keep sharing the testimonies of what Christ is doing in our lives as leaders, as elders, as those who have been in, in the Lord for years in order to encourage others to be obedient to his word. If, you, if they know what God has been doing in your life because of your obedience, they also will want to walk in obedience so that God can, so that they can also experience what you are experiencing and enjoy what you are enjoying in the Lord. Because it takes the, takes our obedience to be able to enjoy certain things as Christians. Okay? So if we are sharing our obedience, sharing our testimonies, the signs and the wonders and the things that God um, is doing in our lives, then we are encouraging those who are just coming and those who may want to uh, live um, lukewarm lives as Christians uh, will become serious. They will be encouraged. They also will, they will desire to experience the kind of signs, the kind of miracles, the kind of wonders, the kind of um, um, relationship uh, that we have with Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It is also important uh, to know that our evangelism should focus on those who have not heard about Christ. I've said that, we have read that actually in the scripture um, in verse 23 there. Focus our evangelism on those who have not heard about Christ and have not accepted him as their Lord and Savior. They are the ones we should focus our evangelism on. Not on those who have already heard and have received him. Yes, they may not be doing well right now, but they have heard about Christ, they have received Christ. All they need is what? Teaching in the church. Teaching in the church. So those who have received spiritual benefits also, like um, we have also read, those who have, well, we also um, learned from that scripture that those who have received spiritual benefits from ministers, from their leaders, from those who ministered unto them, have the obligation of sharing material things with their teachers. You have the obligation. They must share material things 
with those who have instructed them in the word of God, those who have guided them, those who have labored okay, over them. Also, and lastly, prayers must be offered to God always, consistently, for the protection of ministers who are in the field, ministers who are evangelizing, ministers who are preaching, those for the protection of those who are preaching the good news. And the, ex, and the accept, acceptance, we must also um, ask that the Lord, we, uh, we, we lead people, okay, to understand and accept the gospel as they preach the gospel to them all over the world. So we are praying daily, oh Lord, uh, protect the, the uh, evangelists, the ministers, the pastors, and those who are preaching those who are proclaiming the good news all over the world. Father, protect them. We must pray that prayer, Lord, protect them. Because so many of us face attacks on a daily basis. Attacks from unbelievers, from those who do not want to hear about Christ. We face attacks. Oh Lord, protect your ministers. Oh Lord, protect your servants. Everywhere they go, oh Lord, go with them. Oh Lord, cover them. Oh Lord, be there for them fight their battles, shield them from every arrow, shield them from every uh, problem that they that may want to arise wherever they are going, okay, to preach the gospel. And oh Lord, open the eyes of the unbelievers to accept the gospel as the message is being preached to them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We can all make those two prayer points our prayer points daily. Add to the prayer points, uh, to our prayer points daily so that we Make sure that the, uh, the gospel travel all over the world. We are, and, and people that are preaching are also covered. People that are preaching are protected from attacks of the enemy. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so this is all for today that we have learned from Romans chapter um, 15. And I strongly believe that you have picked something from this scripture, just as I have also picked a lot from the scripture. But the more we study, the more understanding we have. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I hope you're going to also join me tomorrow um, as we continue in the studies of, in Bible study. Tomorrow we'll be taking Romans chapter 16. You may want to um, read it before we, we take it tomorrow. And uh, also, if you have any question, uh, anything you do not understand, um, anything that is not clear to you, you can always reach out to me. Um, my number is always uh, there. Uh, we always put it um, on the post there, 08023326850. You can call me. Uh, not really call me. So sorry, I keep saying call me. You can uh, send a message, a WhatsApp message to me on that number, 08023326850 is a Nigerian number. Send a WhatsApp number to me on that uh, a, a WhatsApp message to me on that number, and I will surely reply. Just tell me that oh, I was part of the Bible study and I have this question, or I do not understand this particular uh, um, area. Then we'll be able to talk. And when you send me a message on WhatsApp, uh, definitely I would love to love. I would love to add you to a WhatsApp group where we can always share more knowledge about the Word of God. God bless you as you. Um, have come to be a part of this today. The Lord we remind you of everything that he has taught you today. Remember he is our teacher. Everything that he has taught us today. May we be re reminded. May we always re remember. May, may all that we have learned today not disappear from our memories in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father we thank you once again today for your faithfulness your goodness and your message oh lord uh before we started oh lord we ask for understanding lord i thank you because i know that you have given us understanding thank you lord for the knowledge new knowledge that we have received uh, and deep insight that we have also uh, received from your word today i pray oh lord that all that you have deposited in us today who remain with us oh lord uh, will not be lost in the name of jesus and all that you have been teaching us oh lord uh, father lord uh, Keep reminding us, let none of them, O Lord, be lost in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. So, God, uh, we have just come to the end. Uh, thank you once again, and God bless you. 
as you go about your duties and as you continue to live that life of Christ wherever you are. Let that light of Christ that is in you keep shining in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.